kid. Listen if you Stage. There were just a few groups in the country. And here we are two and a half years later. Now today is Mother's Day, dragging us away from our children. On Mother's Day was never going to be a good thing or an easy thing. But we know that throughout the country, there are close on 100 groups now fighting this. And that every day they grow more numerous. And so does the resistance, even just in individuals who are part of groups. But to drag us out as mothers is what I want to talk about today, not fracking. I am so sick of talking about fracking. Two years of my life talking about fracking. My daughter said to me the other day, fracking, 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 it's all I ever hear. And it has, it has stolen me. And it's stolen me because every time I try to find an exit door, my granddaughter's face is on it. She's dying. And in 30 to 40 years when I'm dead, who looks after her? Or do we just hand as a legacy to our children and grandchildren this? This giving up your time, turning up all over the country to stand and challenge them. Where are they? Why aren't they defending my grandchild? And why aren't they? You know, why is it just us standing between the danger? Why are we the only ones willing to face it and see it? Because for every moment's research we do online, why haven't they done it? Um, our group, Residents Action on Fire Fracking, you'll know the name is Residents Action. When we started out, we thought, hey, natural gas, homegrown, low in energy prices, Lancashire is on its knees as a council, we need the jobs, we need the money. So, but we were concerned, we'd heard some rumours. So we were never going to be against, we were going to be in action to look into it, and all we asked our councillors and our government to do was, hey, just slow down guys slow down give us a pause give us a chance to look into this and tell you are we content with this we the people of the country but we weren't given that opportunity but thankfully mother nature stepped in through an earthquake in the way and they had no choice but they've now got the green light in december we were asked to go in there and give evidence to the house of lords which we did and i will say the first thing that i noted when we walked into the house of lords was three benefit scroungers sitting on the bench because they were sound asleep they were sound asleep. And this is the people who will tell us if our future is okay for our children. How dare these people in office treat us in this way? You know, it just seems that once you started unwrapping wrapping the fracking bundle, what you found was a complete and utter abuse of democracy. It was vile. And when they did wake up, when they did wake up, their question wasn't, is shale gas good for this country? The question was, how do we get you to stop? What is it that you will need to let us go ahead with this? The man said to me, there are so many red lights in your list. What's the order of priority? There was no order of priority. The whole damn thing's wrong. Everything about it is wrong. And if they can't see that yet, when grandmas from across the country took two seconds on Google to say, hey, shale gas, don't even look up a provocative term. You found nothing but first-hand accounts from people just like us who are currently living it. So we have had the visit from the ghost of Christmas future. We know what's coming because we can talk to the people who are currently living it. And yet we are not heeding that and our government is not heeding that. Instead, we drag mothers from the opportunity of breakfast in bed that I could have had and flowers and all the lovely stuff. And instead, I had to get up at the crack of dawn and troop down here. So instead, I'd like my government to be doing that. And if they can't do it, they are the wrong people to hold office. Thank you. So please don't track my